Occam's principle says, one should not increase, beyond what is necessary, the number of entities required to explain anything. Physicists use many entities to explain obscure phenomena, thus violating Occam's principle. A new physical paradigm published in 2020 corrects this situation. Contrary to the dominant paradigm, it uses the minimum possible number of entities, namely one. Instead of dark energy, dark matter, gravitons, quarks, many fields for different interactions, and additional dimensions of space, the new paradigm uses only one entity, Tesla's invisible primary substance. From the states and structures of this substance, the world of mass is created. This unique reduction of entities inevitably leads to the global unification of phenomena. Examples of phenomena with their corresponding states and structures of the primary substance are provided below. Such representations based on a single entity reveal the mechanisms of the phenomena. 1. Gravitational field. A gravitational field is a zone in which the primary substance has a non-uniform density. Objects in such a field accelerate towards higher density. Although the primary substance is not visible, it is indicated by shades of gray in this figure, darker color corresponds to higher density of the primary substance. 2. Elementary particles. According to the new paradigm, elementary particles, atoms, and molecules are stable vortices of the primary substance. The electron density wave participates in two rotations. One rotation around the toroid creates the spin of an electron. The second rotation in the cross-section of the toroid creates an electrical charge. The photon has a toroidal shape similar to that of an electron but is highly elongated. This new understanding of the gravitational field and elementary particles reveals the mechanism of the phenomenon of gravity. In a homogeneous primary substance, any density wave propagates in a straight line. However, the speed of such a wave slows down in a denser primary substance. Therefore, in a gravitational field, the density wave is deflected towards higher density. Any fragment of a vortex particle is a density wave, therefore, the vortex as a whole accelerates toward a higher density of the primary substance. The arrows show the direction of the density wave velocity as part of the electron vortex. In comparison with the new paradigm, general relativity explains gravity by a curvature of space, but it cannot indicate the mechanism through which mass produces space curvature. 3. Dark energy. An inverse gravitational field results when a region of space contains primary substance with a lower density than that in the surrounding area. The gravitational acceleration is directed outward, and if stars and galaxies are in the boundary zone, they will move away from the region of low density. Physicists have attributed this phenomenon to dark energy, thus suggesting that some unknown energy pushes galaxies apart. In the new paradigm, no need for such dark energy exists, because the acceleration of material bodies toward a higher density of primary substance is a common phenomenon and does not require the intervention of any forces. 4. Dark matter. Similarly, the phenomenon of dark matter occurs in a zone with a higher density of primary substance. 5. Origin of the gravity of massive bodies. Primary substance is present everywhere but its density is relatively higher near massive bodies, because particles and atoms lose part of their mass, which returns to the state of unorganized primary substance. Consequently, the density of primary substance increases around massive bodies. As a result, the familiar phenomenon of gravity arises. This is a special case of the extended concept of gravity. Thus, the direct cause of gravity is not massive bodies but an inhomogeneous medium. Massive bodies create gravity indirectly, by creating a denser unorganized primary substance in the surrounding area. 6. Gravity and Deflection of Light The new paradigm reveals that the refraction and diffraction of light is due to gravity. Just as a gravitational field forms around massive space objects, a thin boundary layer forms around small material objects. In such a layer, 
the density of the unorganized primary substance decreases with increasing distance from the object. That is, the local inhomogeneity of the primary substance near ordinary objects is a gravitational mini-field. This figure shows the cross-section of a razor blade. The boundary layer, which is actually invisible, is shown in blue. As the ray passes the edge, it enters a tiny boundary layer and is slightly deflected. This phenomenon is called diffraction. Although light diffraction is believed to occur exclusively at the sharp edge of an obstacle, here we overcome the obstacle stereotype. This figure shows the cross-section of a ball. If the radius R of the ball is chosen so that its surface bends in accordance with the rotation of photons in the boundary layer, the ray deflects along an arc parallel to the surface of the ball. As confirmed experimentally, understanding the role of gravitation in the boundary layer allows to increase the ray deflection. The deflection of a ray passing near the sun can be viewed as a unique case of diffraction around a very large ball. More than 300 years ago, in his letter to Robert Boyle, the great Isaac Newton had already hypothesized the existence of an intermediate layer around bodies. He supposed the ether within bodies, and the ether outside bodies, not to be terminated in mathematical surfaces, but to grow gradually into one another. Newton continued, this may be the cause why light, in Grimaldi's experiment, passing by the edge of a knife, or other opaque body, is turned aside, and as it were refracted. In this drawing by Isaac Newton, the layer boundaries are marked with a dotted line, and the layer clearly begins before reaching the body boundary. Thus, Newton believed that diffraction results from the refraction of photons in a boundary layer. This figure depicts a boundary layer around a glass prism. Ray B passes through part of the gravitational field inside the prism. This is refraction. Unlike Ray B, Ray A does not pass through the glass of the prism but instead passes only through the boundary layer at the prism's tip. This situation corresponds to diffraction, regardless of whether the obstacle is opaque or not. Thus, the new paradigm unifies diffraction, refraction, and the deflection of a star ray passing near the sun. 7. Total Internal Reflection of Light a problem arises in the wave theory of light when the phenomenon of total internal reflection is considered, because nothing is present at the glass vacuum boundary that could reflect the wave. To explain total internal reflection, scientists usually discuss the conditions under which total internal reflection occurs. According to the new paradigm, smooth rotation of a photon occurs in a non-uniform boundary layer, and a deviation occurs toward the denser medium. Here possible trajectories of a photon are shown. The glass vacuum boundary layer is marked by two dotted lines. If the photon reaches the upper edge of the boundary layer, then it enters a straight trajectory. Otherwise, it continues turning in the non-uniform boundary layer and returns to the denser medium. In the video, although the third ray goes beyond the edge of the glass, it still remains in the boundary layer zone and therefore continues to rotate and returns to the glass. To illustrate the similarity between a boundary layer and a gravitational field, let us consider the possible trajectories of a rocket in free flight in the Earth's gravitational field. The blue rocket rises steeply, whereas the red rocket travels in a sloping trajectory, reaches a peak, and returns to the ground. The second rocket resembles total internal reflection in the case of ray refraction at the glass vacuum interface. Thus, the new paradigm also reveals the mechanism of total internal reflection. The word reflection is clearly as inappropriate to the phenomenon of total internal reflection as the statement that a thrown ball returns to the ground as a result of reflection. 8. Origin of Electron Charge According to the new paradigm, a difference exists between the sides of the electron. In this figure the electron is illustrated schematically as a cross-section. On one side, the density wave moves inward, and a region of decreased medium density is formed, whereas on the opposite side, the density wave moves outward, and a region of increased medium density is formed. The first region corresponds to a negative charge, and the second to a positive one. 
Thus, the electron is a dipole. The gray shading shows the change in medium density caused by the behavior of the electron vortex. Both charges of the electron circulate along with its density wave, thereby creating a magnetic moment. To illustrate the rotation of charges, it is better to use a different perspective. 9. Electrical interaction of electrons. The global unification of many phenomena follows from such a unity of the world. In addition to dark energy, dark matter, and optical phenomena, the extended concept of gravity explains the electrical interaction of electrons. This figure shows electron B schematically as a cross-section. Let electron A be to the left of B and oriented in the same direction. The negative charge of electron A creates a rarefied zone of primary substance to the left of electron B. If we add an electron C to the right of B with the same orientation, then B is in a local gravitational field and experiences gravitational acceleration to the right. If such a situation occurs in a closed circuit, an electric current will result in the conductor. 10. Electron-positron pair creation. The new paradigm reveals the mechanism of the electron-positron pair creation. At suitable energies, two photons collide, stick together, and shrink. Electric charges appear. Then one photon transforms into an ordinary electron with a negative charge in front of it, and the other transforms into a positron with a positive charge in front of it. Here, the magnetic field is perpendicular to the illustration. In contrast to the new paradigm, the dominant paradigm does not reveal the details regarding the creation of an electron-positron pair. Considering the process of electron-positron pair creation, it becomes clear that the second photon plays only the role of an obstacle for the first, and vice versa. So maybe the charge in thunderclouds is formed as a result of the collision of cosmic rays with the atomic nuclei of the cloud. This understanding may come in handy in the development of efficient solar cells. Thus, alongside the unification, the new paradigm has unveiled a total of ten mechanisms of various phenomena. I thank Alexander Bachman. Without your help, this video would not exist.